Hello. Uh, today we're going to talk about WCF data services and specifically how it can interact, um, how it can work with the Entity Framework. Of course, uh, WCF data services don't require the Entity Framework, but they do work well together. Um, so as you can see from this diagram, let's see, D uh, WCF data services are really a convenient way to create an OData service on top of a data model. And uh, OData is a standardized protocol for creating and consuming data APIs, a sort of formal way of describing a RESTful service. Um, you know, normally you would need to get specific documentation from a developer on uh, what their REST API offered. Um, with OData, it basically defines a formal way to do CRUD type operations. So you really don't need to, uh, or it doesn't require. Um, information on the REST API. It follows its standard. So um, let's switch over to Visual Studio. Um, and here I have two projects. Uh, the first one I'll describe is a WPF client app. And we used this client app in our earlier screencast, uh, the one on Entity Framework Database first. Um, and we'll use this client app to pull uh, data from the positions uh, data model um, through the data service. So um, well, what we've got here is just a button we'll click, and that will initiate the call through the data service, and then we'll return the collection of, of uh, positions, and we'll uh, pass it and data bind it with a list view here. Um, so that's our client. Um, now I've created an empty um, web project here for the data service, and I brought in um, the uh, data model into Entity Framework. Um, let's see. Yeah, so um, this was done in our, our earlier uh, screencast for the database first approach. Um, and so I've just gone ahead and done that myself. But you see we've got the data model in here. I'll go ahead and bring it up. And we've got our cruise position, place, and time zone tables and the uh, relations between them. So we've got the Entity Framework data model brought in. And I've gone ahead and created an initial position service. And let's take a look at that now. Um, when you initially create a, a data service here, um, it, defaults to a, it defaults to a data service. And um, what we're going to have to do initially, or immediately, we're going to have to change this to an entity. Um, let's see, an entity framework data service. And uh, we're going to be exposing our positions data model. And so we pass in the DB context here. So that's positions uh, context. There we go. OK, so that's the first step. There's really not much to this. Uh, the only other thing we need to do now is define which um, entities we want to expose and to what extent we want to expose them. And um, here we could just say something like positions. And we could say just read only access. Uh, what we're going to do, this is just a demo, and we typically would never do this in a production environment. We'll just open things up. And we'll just say all, because I want to show you how we can uh, um, access these different uh, collections via the service. So um, typically, this is not something we do in production, but for a demo, it's fine. So that's um, all we need to do to expose our Entity Framework data model through the data service. Pretty cool, huh? It's really easy. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this. Um, so to look at this data service, we'll just uh, go ahead and uh, view in browser. Bring that up in our browser here. Bring this down. A second here, we should see. Now we see all four of uh, of the collections: cruises, places, positions, places, positions, and time zones. Um, we could specifically look at one of the collections, say cruises, and we get back um, the entire collection of cruises. Um, see, we have Bahamas cruise one, two. 
in Florida to New Bern 2013. Huh. So we, we uh, basically have pulled back the cruises that way. Let's go ahead and look for a particular position. Say positions, um, say one. And we pull back positions one. So you can see, you know, what I'm effectively doing is passing a query to the server, which in turn passes it into Link. Link then talks to the Entity Framework, says I, I you know, uh, with passes in the query, and uh, the Entity Provider that's associated with the Entity Framework converts it into a S SQL query and runs that on the database. Um, and then the data that's returned is, is passed back through this pipeline all the way back to the browser. Um, it's a pretty slick. Um, and of course, there's all sorts of ways to filter, and um, you know your queries can be quite complex here. Um, and it's all built in. So let's um, let's go ahead and complete this project by pulling the data um, that we need for our WPF client via the data service. So let's switch back Visual Studio. Now the one thing I need to do is to go in here. Let's just get the um, uh, port. Let me just go ahead and attempt to add a service reference so I can just get that information. So here we go. This is what we need. And let me go in here and fill this in. So instead of getting our DB context locally and creating a reference to that DB context here, we're actually pulling that via this URL. So I think we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and run. Oh, one other thing we need to do is set this to be the startup project. And we'll go ahead and run here. Okay, we'll get positions. Okay, we got back our data, uh, pulling it through the data service. So you can see that we've successfully retrieved data from the Entity Framework by exposing it via a WCF data service. I hope you've enjoyed this screencast. Uh, we'll do more with data services in the future. Thanks uh, very much. Bye for now.